So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the June 2018 paper 2 section B which is the statistics part of the paper. And as always I'll include a question breakdown so you can see which topic refers to which question in this section of the paper. So let's get started on section B of this June 2018 paper 2. And if we scroll to those papers, so looking at question 1 which relates to probability distribution it says the table below shows a probability distribution for a discrete random variable x. Find the value of k. So the key principle we need to remember with this is that all of these probabilities need to add up to 1. So then on our calculators, if we do k equals 1 minus 0.35, minus 0.25, minus 0.14, minus 0.1, we get a k value of 0 0.16 which is our second option then moving on to question 14 it says given that the sum of x is 364 and the sum of x squared is 19412 and n equals 10 find sigma the standard deviation of x so for this what we need to do is recognize that the formula for standard deviation is sigma x squared minus uh, sorry divided by n minus the mean squared or square rooted. Now for the mean, well that's going to be sigma x over n. So then what I need to do in terms of entering the numbers, well it's going to be 19412 divided by 10 minus the mean which is going to be 36.4 squared or square rooted and the answer I should get is going to be 24.8. Then moving on to question 15, it says that Nicola, a darts player, is practicing hitting the bullseye. She knows from previous experience that the probability of 0 0.3 of hitting the bullseye with each dart. Nicola throws eight dart practice darts. Use the binomial distribution, calculate the probability that she will hit the bullseye three or more times. So first things first, let's set up the parameter of her B and then the total sample size, which is eight, and the probability of a success which is 0 0.3. So then from this, what we're wanting to work out, what the question is asking us to do, is to work out the probability that x is greater or equal to 3. So then from this, we know that this is going to be equal to the probability of x being less or equal to 2. So then on my Casio calculator, I can then work out this probability by going under Menu, then going to Distribution, then going to binomial CD and then we want variable and the parameters we then want to set is we've got x equals 2, n equals 8 and p equals 0 0.3. Now entering that on our calculator will give us a probability value of 0 0.551775 to five decimal places and we want to take that away from 1 giving me a final answer of 0 0.44823 and that's to five decimal places. It then says Nicola throws eight practice darts on three different occasions. Calculate the probability that she will hit the bullseye three or more times on all three occasions. Well for this what we need to do is just work out the probability of her hitting the bullseye three or more times which is my answer in part A and then we want to raise that to the power of three. And again, if I type that into my calculator, I get an answer of 0 0.09005, and that's to five decimal places. It then says for 15C, state two assumptions that are necessary for the distribution you have used in part A to be valid. Well, there's a couple of things we can write. So here we want to state that it, it needs to be independent. So in other words, uh, there needs to be uh, one throw cannot be affected by the result of another throw so you'd think that if Nicola threw a dart and she was way off then judging by how far away she was she would then get closer in her second dart so it needs to be consistent and the fact that that not be the case you could also state something along the lines of that the probability of hitting a bullseye correct the spelling on some of this. So the probability of hitting a bullseye 
remains the same and you could also say something along the lines of is that, that there are only two outcomes so either a hit or a miss so something along those lines would be good enough but you definitely would need to state two different sort of property assumptions rather than just going into detail about one moving on to question 16 it says that kevin is a principal of a college he wishes to investigate types of transport used by students to travel and how they travel to college there are 3,200 students in the college and Kevin decides to survey 60 of them. Describe how he could obtain a simple random sample of size 60 from the 3,200 students. So what we need to do is basically go through the parameters of how to collect a simple random sample. So the first thing we need to do is we need to give each student a number from 1 to 3,200. Now again, make sure that the range of those two numbers has got to be 3,200 um, in the fact that obviously if we go from zero, if there was a ticket with zero, then there will be 3,201. Um, so just be mindful of what numbers you are writing there. The next one is that we need to then do is to basically generate a random number using a calculator or computer program um, and again you could give an example of how you would do this so you could say you could use uh, ran times 3,200 3, so something along those lines I wouldn't say you need to do that, but again, if you want to do that, that'd be absolutely fine. The next thing we then need to mention is that you ignore any repeats. So ignore any repeats. And then basically the last one is you stop when 60 different numbers have been drawn. So something along those lines would be fine for the four marks. Then moving on to question 17, it says the table below is an extract from the large data set showing the purchase quantities of fats and oils for the southeast of England in 2014. Kim claims that more olive oil was purchased in the southeast uh, than soft margarine. Explain why Kim may be incorrect. Now for these, you could, there's several reasons which you could go for, but I would say the most popular ones are going to be is that no units are stated. So for example, in comparing olive oil to uh, margarine, no units have been tailed, so we can't really know what it is. But also, you could have a, or well, there also, there is a mixture of liquids and solids. So for example, liquids will be measured using, let's say, liquid units, so looking at milliliters or liters, whereas solids are gonna be measured in grams, kilograms, etc. So again, anything of those, something along those two lines would be good enough for the two marks there. Moving on to question 18, it says that Jenny is a piano teacher who teaches nine pupils. She records how many hours per week they practice the piano along with their most recent practical exam score. She plots the scattered diagram of this data as shown below. And the first question is asking us to identify two possible outliers by name, giving possible explanations for the position on their scatter diagram for each outlier. So let's go back to the set of data. Now from this, you should be able to spot that the two outliers are gonna be this one here and this one here. So again, looking at which one of those is gonna be, so this one here is gonna be Collins, and that first one here is gonna be, so this one there. Uh, looking at the data, or oh, sorry, that's gonna be Collins. So 
and this one is Collins and this one here is going to be Donovan so then commenting on each of those two people so let's just go for Donovan first so here you could say possible reason is that that's going to be a data misentry so in other words the data has been entered incorrectly and probably along the lines of that five not 50 so again looking at Donovan's scores 50 does stand out, so you're probably looking at all the other numbers, you probably expect that to be a 5 rather than a 50. Then looking at Collins, and if we go back to where Collins is, so looking at Collins, the number of hours he's practiced is 1, but his score was 80, so again, it sounds to me like he may be a naturally gifted student so something along those lines that like maybe have overachieved or just naturally naturally good at the piano maybe he had prior lessons or private lessons that outside of what all the others have done would be absolutely fine for question 18b it says Jenny discards the two outlines describe the correlation shown by the scatter diagram for the remaining points and again what we need to write here is that it's going to be strong positive correlation then interpret this correlation well when we've got strong positive correlation it basically means that the more hours completed the better the practice exam score then moving on to question 19, it says that Martin grows cucumbers from seed. In the past, he found that 70% of all seeds successfully germinate and grow into cucumber plants. He decides to try out a new brand of seed. The producer of this brand claims that these seeds are more likely to successfully germinate than other brands of seeds. Martin sows 20 of, his, of this new brand of seed and 18 successfully germinate. Carry out a hypothesis test at a 5% SIG level to investigate the producer's claim. Now the nice thing is that it's got seven marks for this question, so we can go straight into our format of how we set these questions up. So the first thing we want to do is establish what our null hypothesis is going to be. So that's going to be that the probability is as stated as being as 0.7. And then with this new type of seed that the probability is going to be better, so that means it's going to be greater than 0.7. Now that in itself should be worth one mark. The next thing for this then to do is then set the parameter. So we're testing at a 5% SIG level. We're looking at a one tail test. And then setting up the parameters, we've got a binomial, we've got a total sample size of 20, and the probability of success being 0 0.8. Then to work out our test statistic, Well, it's going to be the probability of x, and it's going to be the same direction as what's in our null alternate hypothesis of 18. So we want to work out the probability of getting more than 18. So this is going to be equal to probability of 1 minus x equals less than 17. So then on my Casio calculator, again, I go for menu, distribution, we want binomial CD and we want variable then the parameters are going to be n equals 17 p equals 0 0.7 and x sorry I got those the wrong way around so x is 17 and n is 20 and then type that into my calculator I get an answer of 0 0.965 so I'll do one takeaway that because I want the probability of getting 18 or more and that equals 0 0.035 so then moving on to my conclusion as 0 0.035 is less than the significance level of 0 0.35 
I reject HO, or you could say that you accept H1, whichever floats your boat. And then it's really important that we do state this, so then there is sufficient evidence to suggest at a 5% SIG level, the company's claim is correct in that it produces better seeds that germinate. And there we go.